This is The New Way We Work from Fast Company Magazine, where we take listeners on a journey through the changing landscape of our work lives and explain exactly what we need to build the future we want. I'm Fast Company Deputy Editor, Kate Davis. On last week's episode, I talked to Dr. Tomas Tramaro Premizik about the science of miscommunication at work. He had a lot of great advice on being a better listener and a clearer communicator. If you haven't listened to that episode already, go back and take a listen. So something universal about communication in most workplaces is the use of jargon. And while each workplace has its own industry-specific terms and acronyms, here at Fast Company, we are guilty of using this kind of shorthand for many of our packages and programs. WCI, World Changing Ideas, MIC, Most Innovative Companies, MCP, Most Creative People, CC, Creative Control, one of our other podcasts, and the mouthful TNWWW for the new way we work. Still, there are a lot of workplace business jargon that has somehow seeped into many workplaces, and while most everyone is guilty of using it, it's also pretty widely disliked. So we thought we'd have some fun today and root out the worst of the worst of the office jargon. And here to help me decide which of these terms is the most cringeworthy, our senior editor for Work Life, Julia Hurst, and senior editor for Growth and Engagement, Lydia Dishman. Welcome both back to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. This is a very important conversation. So this is. <laughs> Excited. Also joining us is producer Josh Christensen to moderate this debate. Since the jargon is so awful, we thought it would be the most fun to make a game out of it. Josh, can you explain the rules? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Kate. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Julia. So, uh, I, I mean, I may be one of the only sports fans in this Zoom room right now, but I love I a March Madness. <laughs> <laughs> I love a March Madness bracket, so I don't know if uh, if you all are are big fans, or or even this is kind of a, a World Cup style bracket too, or topical right now. So. Uh, we have gone through an extensive list of office jargon and whittled it down to the 16 worst that we thought we could use in this bracket. So we will uh, pit those terms against each other, first starting with a round of eight one-on-one -on -one matchups between these terms. The winner or loser, depending on how you look at it, of each of those matchups will move on to the next round where they'll be pitted against another winner and so on until we have a champion of the worst office jargon possible. So we'll debate the terms and then the three of you will vote on the worst. Whoever wins that vote moves on. Does that all make sense? Are we are we good to jump into these terms? Yes, got it. Yes. I will say, though, before we get started, I want to preview the terms that we'll be debating. So for your consideration, here is my pass at the most jargon-filled statement of all time, featuring all 16 terms from our bracket. <clears throat> We will need to disrupt this with some thought leadership. I want to empower you to think outside the box. Let's blue sky some ideas beyond the low-hanging fruit. We need something that will really move the needle. I want to circle back on those ideas that we double-clicked on last week and took offline. I think we had a lot of alignment on ways to create synergy, so now we just need to get boots on the ground so we can leverage it. Who has the bandwidth to start growth hacking? <laughs> Thank you. Thank Very you. impressive. Thank wow. you. This could be a drinking game also. I think. <laughs> yes. I, I also feel like that exact paragraph has been said probably by Elon Musk at some point. I mean, <laughs> not a single person is not guilty of saying at least some form of some of these words in conversation. I definitely have said circle back before. I think. Some of them I think are actually, well, we'll get into this. Some of them are useful and not so bad. And some of them are just truly terrible and nobody should ever say. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Josh, what's our first matchup? Yeah. So our first matchup is circle back versus boots on the ground. All right. And not to taint the pool, but we did a couple of these as LinkedIn polls and this was one of them. And it was a really close one. Circle back came in at 46% and boots on the ground at 54%. And one thing that a lot of people said, which I agree with, is that military terms and like allusions to the military don't really have a place in office life. Like we are not as in life and death battles. And so uh, boots on the ground seemed a little like inappropriate. 
But Julianne and Lydia, what do you think? I totally agree to that point. I'm actually kind of surprised that they're so close. I think it's because Circleback appears so frequently so that maybe it's getting kind of dinged for like frequency of use. But if I'm picking Boots on the Ground, is definitely the worst offender. Yeah. Yeah. Lydia? Totally agree. I, I went to the place of, you know, military. And also, relatedly, there seems to be a lot of violent type or adjacent jargon. So anything that is, you know, crushing it, killing it, yeah, stomping with the boots on the ground, that's totally cringeworthy. That said, circle back. There are so many better ways to say that you want to get back in touch with somebody. For example, get back in touch with you. <laughs> I think some of the reason that these things exist is just because they're shorthand. So you don't have to be like, hey, let's come back to this in two I weeks. I mean, <laughs> follow up. <laughs> like, would follow up if it was used more than circle back become the jargon yeah, that we is it, it's part of this a cliche type uh, conundrum talk to you again <laughs> like, TTYL if you say it like that yeah <laughs> BRB like, <laughs> I mean we could do an entire another episode on acronyms as I mentioned at the top with uh, all the acronyms that people use the ROI with your KPIs and yeah but <laughs> yeah I feel definitely I agree boots on the ground like I don't know that anyone's ever said that in a conversation with me but if they did I would kind of yeah yeah <laughs> I can imagine it happening for sure. Yeah. So it seems like we don't need an actual vote. This is a consensus on boots on the ground is moving on, on the to ground. our next round. Congratulations, <laughs> yeah. boots on the ground. <laughs> circle back. You live to see another day. We'll circle, we'll circle back, back to, to circle back <laughs> another time. Our next matchup is take off line versus leverage. Ugh. <laughs> the thing is, I hate them both. I hate They're all both of them. bad, but I do feel like. I think take off line is said in a more annoying context usually. <laughs> well, also like what online are you? Like you'll do it not on the internet? I mean, take, I mean, I know it means like we'll talk about it separately. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that is often said when somebody says something they shouldn't in a meeting and then somebody more senior tries to like cut in to, you know, redirect. It's the cousin to put a pin in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But also with the sort of added, like, we should not be talking about <laughs> this with this group. <laughs> so it's extra awkward. Do you feel it's more like scolding? It doesn't always have to be scolding. I mean, I think there are times when it like is necessary, but it does have sort of that extra thing of like when somebody says that nobody's like, wow, I feel great about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one, feels, no one feels great when they're told to take it offline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about leverage then? I mean, Ugh. leverage has its place, but I feel like people use it to sort of sound more competent than they are. So for me, that's like the bigger offender. Yes, it feels more jargony. Like it feels more like I'm trying to impress you. Like let's, I mean, we'll talk about synergy soon, but I, I always think of them together. Like let's leverage our synergies, like just nonsensical businessy jargony word. I think because it's a single word, like there usually is like a direct one-to-one -one substitute you could use that would be more direct and more like honest. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, in the name of service journalism, what should people use instead of leverage? Like what's the synonym that you can use there? I mean, I think it's kind of context dependent, like how you are using it. Mm -hmm. So if it was like in a context of like, we want to leverage our resources to accomplish this goal. How about just use? use. Yeah. <laughs> Is part of the rubric for this jargon, I mean, obviously there's the cringy thing, there's the boots on the ground sort of allusions to, um, you know, military or, or or kind of the violent jargon, or I know the, like, sports jargon gets a lot of, oh, uh, yep. <laughs> and obviously we're using a sports in, <laughs> uh, inside, uh, It's a little too inside this. baseball. Uh, it's a little uh, too yeah, exactly, or like thing. exclusionary, yeah. but is part of the bracket with, like, leverage that it is just, like, it is a unnecessary trip out of the way to sound more professional or competent or it's like an illusion. And you know what somebody commented in one of our LinkedIn polls was the one that they hate the most is utilize. And they said for the same thing, just use use. Right, like, exactly. You don't need to use utilize. I think some of these exist because they actually are a shorthand that is necessary or like simpler in some situations. And so that is when I am more understanding. But when it's like a single word that is just more complicated than another very <laughs> commonly used word, yes. then that feels like that should be, you know, dinged. 
for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you're all writers. How often are you told like in in an edit session, like don't use that big word, just use a simpler word, you know? Yeah. It's not quite the same, but uh, you know, we talk so much about authenticity and I think that as soon as somebody uses utilizes leveraging <laughs> their largest <laughs> vocabulary possible. It seems just disingenuous. And I Agreed. immediately am discounting what they're saying. Okay. It feels like we all hate leverage the most. But let's take an official vote. Lydia, do you take offline or leverage to move on to the next round? Leverage. Kate? <sighs> yeah. I mean, I hate, again, I hate them both, but I guess I hate leverage more. And Julia? I could go either way, but I'll be persuaded on on leverage. (laughs) Well, your vote didn't matter anyways. We already had two against. (laughs) Hey, my vote matters. Every vote counts. Voting always counts. I'm participating in democracy. Sorry. (laughs) We just leveraged our influence to (laughs) push this vote forward. (laughs) So leverage moves on to the next round where it'll take on boots on the ground. Let's move to our next matchup, which is, ooh, this is a good one. We had another Twitter poll about this. Alignment versus synergy. Yes, and I will say this one was very strongly in the favor of, or not favor of, against. Synergy got 76%, and alignment only got 24%. And I will say I don't like alignment, but synergy, I agree. Like, synergy is pretty awful. (laughs) Yeah, and for the same reason. I think it just sounds really disingenuous. Like, you can think of many other ways to say that you are in agreement with somebody, or you have some things in common, or these are the things that work together in this particular situation. And yes, it's longer, but it just sounds fake and kind of bro-y too. Yes, it feels of the era and ilk of like disrupt, like, oh, mm-hmm. yes, synergy. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does feel dated for sure. I mean, alignment, I guess alignment is kind of trying to say the same thing, right? We're aligned, we agree, these things work together. It is like the less offensive of the two. Mm-hmm. Agree. Yeah, I think synergy probably just happened. Like it feels more common to me and so therefore grosser. I don't know, people are probably more sick of it. It's definitely like bigger in popular culture, I feel like, than alignment. Okay, so this one, I feel, I'm sorry to do your job for you, Josh, but I feel like this is unanimous, right? Yeah, synergy. This, this synergy's moving on to the next round. That was that was a pretty, um, you know, that was a blowout matchup there. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to our next uh, pairing, Low Hanging Fruit versus Blue Sky. Again, they're both awful. <laughs> they're, okay, they're both bad, but I think Blue Sky is much worse. That is my feeling because the low-hanging fruit is used a lot. Low-hanging fruit is actually like conveying a concept. I don't know. I will say I've heard low-hanging fruit used quite a lot in meetings. You know, when we're talking about like the easiest thing we can do. Um, but blue sky, what what is so offensive to you about blue sky? Saying it feels it feels like the wrong part of speech. I don't know. It's just I can't imagine <laughs> saying it with any sort of seriousness, right? Like use it in a sentence. Well, I did. We need to blue sky these ideas. Right. And that's and therein lies the problem because <laughs> it becomes a verb. This is not a verb. Exactly. You know, so that's number one. Number two is this is, again, this kind of like bro culture type of talk, which yeah. A, decade check, B, there's definitely a better way to say that we're open to all ideas. Let's brainstorm Okay, because br- I was just about to say, well, brainstorm is a made no, up. No, I don't think that counts. Brainstorm's fine. It's not on the bracket. It's a technical term, like right. This is like what we are doing. You're having a storm in your brain, like it's a yes. made up thing. It's all made up. Let's all get together and have a meeting where we throw out ideas and then decide which ones we like the best. <laughs> oh, that's so much easier. Thank you. <laughs> do not throw spaghetti at the wall, and do right. not grab for the low hanging fruit. <laughs> is it the thing with blue sky though it's uh, and not to be, i'm gonna be the blue sky stan here i guess but just to, uh to uh to use another term to play devil's advocate no uh, we're not on this for advocate um like isn't blue sky more specific around like what is it you know throwing out everything else of you know limitations what is the best possible best idea case. if we had yeah. no no other limitations and and go with that like that is a pretty specific term that i do think I'm struggling to think of a, a more succinct way. 
Yeah, big picture thinking. But it's like best case scenario too, right? Like not just. Yeah. Here's the funny thing. We cannot describe blue sky without using other jargony terms like brainstorm, big picture. So it's the it's the inception of, of jargon. It's a jargon within a jargon. Yeah. So meta. It's hard to speak about jargon without using jargon. Well, I but I do feel that it got co-opted as a verb, which is problematic in and of itself. But the other issue with it is that it also feels disingenuous for a different reason. When you really are encouraging blue sky thinking, not a verb, modifier, (laughs) you have to have the kind of trust that will allow everybody to just put forth all of the ideas, even the quote unquote bad ones. So that's why I think this is a really problematic term because it just doesn't speak to the fact that when you're saying blue sky thinking, you may, you may not mean it because somebody's going to come up with an idea and somebody else is going to shoot it down. So, Well, how do you know you don't mean it? Maybe you very genuinely mean blue sky. I think that context is everything. I'm so. doing double bed with you too. I don't, if somebody literally said this in a meeting, I would be It'd be hard to control my facial expression. I think part of the reason it's not great is because it's like a little unclear. I mean, I think maybe not everyone has exactly the same. Not everyone is aligned. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's not really a lot of synergy. We need to get synergy on the definition of blue sky. Okay. Oof. All right. Okay. I will vote for low hanging fruit just because okay. I oh, think of okay. the frequency of hearing it. Like I have never heard anyone say blue sky. And if they did, I would probably be a little jarring and whatever, but it would be refreshing at least. Cause I hear low hanging fruit all the time. <laughs> we are talking about our low okay. hanging fruit. And I just picture these branches with bananas close to the ground. So I'll picture a blue sky instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have one vote for low hanging fruit, Lydia. Uh, definitely Blue Sky and P.S. in the early days of covering tech company launches. I heard that a lot from certain types of founders. Well, maybe I just like it because it's retro. Okay. And we could have an upset coming. Julia? I'm going Blue Sky is worse. Oh, oh. Blue Sky moves on. The Cinderella story. <laughs> it still counts, you guys. It does. You just <laughs> didn't win. <laughs> okay. Moving on to our next matchup. Move oh. the needle versus growth hacking. I'm sorry. I, Your visceral reaction to I every hate term. The word hacking. I think it's disgusting. Like it sounds like it just sounds really gross. It's like you're hacking up a lung. Yes, any kind <laughs> of hacking. I don't want any kind of hacking happening. I think growth hacking is definitely worse because when you actually look up growth hacking, which I did because I was like, who would actually use this in any sort of seriousness? <laughs> it comes to, like a lot of the images are about like a hacking funnel, which then has more terminology. Like there's different corporate terminology associated with different parts. It's just, it's all bad. It's unnecessary. And nobody can, nobody should be able to say that with a straight face. Move the needle is jargony. I have heard it used quite a lot. Um, again, it's one of those terms that you could say something else to mean the same thing, but I guess it's kind of shorthand. I do feel like it's pretty succinct and like has a point, right? I mean, you're basically saying like it's not going to make a measurable difference or we want to make a measurable difference. We want to move the needle. Yeah. We want to like collectively change how people feel about something or, you know, whatever. That's, yeah. you know, move the needle is shorter. No, oh, I'm with growth hacking because I think just the- The word hack. The hack yeah. part, not because I'm picturing somebody- coughing up a lung, but also because that became, again, very bro We're just going to hack something like, you know, and then all of a sudden there's like biohacking. And that goes well beyond what the original intent of like having a hackathon to try to figure out something. <laughs> just all of the hacks need to just... Can we just swipe left on all of the hacks? Wow, I actually feel <laughs> totally fine about the word hackathon for the record. Biohacking, yeah, no. hackathon, hackers, yeah, growth hacking, yeah. It's all bad. You, I feel like we're unanimous on growth hacking. Yes. Unanimous on This that. was a pretty easy one. Growth hacking moves on to the next round. Our next matchup is empower versus think outside the box. Hmm. Oof. 
<laughs> think outside the box. <laughs> the worst. I'm glad you feel strongly on this, Lydia. <laughs> tell me why you hate think outside the box, and I'll tell you why I hate in power. Okay. For the same reason I hate color outside the lines, neither of these things just make real world sense. Think outside the box. Think creatively. Turn the problem upside down. Look at it a diff- with a different perspective. Change your perspective. Like There are just so many other ways to do it, and it sounds really like overused. And again, I'm going to go back to the authenticity factor. I don't really believe people when they say, think outside the box. I think that's just a reflexive thing that they are saying. That's true. Whatever you are thinking outside of the box is probably very commonplace and, right, you know, like not that radical. Yeah, yeah. it's probably innovative. <laughs> <laughs> the air co- I hope people could hear the quotes. When you say yeah. that. Uh, Julia, what, do you have strong feelings on think outside the box versus empower? I don't have strong feelings on this. I would love to hear you make the case for empower. Thank you for giving me this platform to tell you why. Yes. I feel like you need to also. <laughs> I just feel like in power has such a sexist legacy. You never hear about sexist and racist probably too. Like the the people that you hear empowered are always you know women and people of color, people without the power, right? It's we're I'm going to empower you. Like I don't need your permission, thank you very much. Like I don't need you to give me usually if you're talking about empowering somebody, you're you're probably kind of condescending to them, in my opinion. I think, obviously, a lot of people would feel differently or disagree, but just I do have kind of a visceral reaction to empower because there was an era where every pitch in my inbox was like, empowering women to blah, 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 blah. And it's just, ugh. Yeah, you're giving permission, for sure, as opposed to just like letting people have agency. Yes. So I am very strongly, I'm fine with thinking outside the box and coloring outside the lines and whatever. Even though you you make a good point, Lydia, like probably the thing that it is overused and probably the thing that people are saying is not very revolutionary, but I just hate in power. So we've had two impassioned cases here. I feel like we made our like campaigns for Julia to to decide. <laughs> Julia's like, <laughs> now it's all Julia's turn. I thought I would feel strongly on all of these, but honestly, this one, I'm kind of like, yeah, Kate, I think you've persuaded me. Yes! So um, Empower moves on. I don't know why I feel so empowered right now. I wasn't really thinking about it in, in those terms. So like I could I could have been persuaded. Do you want to change your vote? Do you officially want to go on record? <laughs> <laughs> if that'll make you feel better. <laughs> we have to get the competition out of the way. So go for it. It's a unanimous decision. Wow. <laughs> the stakes literally couldn't be lower. So I knew it would turn into this where we all felt really passionate. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it would turn into me bullying people to change their vote to agree with me. <laughs> I was going to say, like, Josh, how do we win? Who's winning? I don't know if any of us are winning necessarily. (laughs) Corporate America wins when we crown the worst jargon and forbid everybody from ever using it again. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We we suffer so you can so you can thrive. Uh, going through this, I think these next two matchups are the ones that I have the most visceral reaction to. The first one a matchup that we have is double click versus bandwidth. And this is another one. This is the last one that we did a LinkedIn poll about. And it was pretty even. That's shocking to me because I feel like one is so much worse than the other. People disagree. Double click came in at 46% and bandwidth at 54%. So bandwidth won by a, you know, a hair. But what is the one that you think is the worst, Julia? Absolutely double click. If anybody ever said that to me sincerely, I think I might just leave a meeting. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to try that out and see. If, like, <laughs> Sure. Let's test this. <laughs> yeah. Leaving a Zoom is not quite as exciting. True confession. I, ne- like you said, you never heard Blue Sky like in a conversation. I've never heard Double Click in a conversation. I don't think I have either. Oh, I 100% have. Oh, I know someone who uses it a lot. Same. I will not, I will not name names. <laughs> make, no. them make their case. Wait, is it someone within our Fast Company family? I'll tell you offline. I know somebody who uses it too, and I don't know if it's the same person that Josh knows. So clearly, double click is being uttered in Fast Company Zooms. Um, Bandwidth is used all the time. Yeah, but I think that's because it has a purpose, right? It is communicating something that is succinct. Again, 
I don't have the bandwidth to take this on right now. Like, I don't have the time. I have too much I'm doing. I have too much on my plate, which is another. Yeah, that's so much better. What a great solution. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I have a lot that I'm doing. I don't have the time. Like, say what you mean. Like, bandwidth. Yeah. I mean, I think part of the reason that exists is because it's, like, a slightly coded socially acceptable way to say it right like the reason that exists is because you can't tell your boss i'm too busy right but i mean that's silly you're like yeah if you told me like i don't have the bandwidth to do that i wouldn't feel oh i'd probably feel worse i don't know than you saying like i have too much going on right now i'm too busy yeah i think it's just like the reason it exists is because people are trying to like i mean you're right like indirectly say a thing in an office setting so that is by definition, something we don't like, right? We like people being direct. But I think there's a reason that it exists. Whereas double click is that that is not a thing that anybody That's just dumb. <laughs> They're both computery terms, right? Double click feels like it was written like when people were talking about like the World Wide Web. <laughs> like, <laughs> www. Real big dot. Tim Berners Lee stands going into the double click. Yeah. I have a question though to put out there. Part of the reason why, and, and I have to admit, actually, I still use bandwidth because it's like, it's just I think like I've heard you use it. ingrained in my vocabulary, and I, but I don't like it because I feel like it's a little dehumanizing. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel it's like, oh, do you have enough bandwidth to handle this is making someone seem like not like a human being who's yes. working, but making yeah. them seem like a machine built for output. Again, just yeah. use, literally use the word time. Like, do you have enough time or resources? Seriously, but yeah. like, I I, th- I agree with Julia. I think it's coded. Yeah. And yes, it is somewhat dehumanizing, but it also sort of deflects because you don't exactly know what's lacking on the person's part. You just hear that they can't handle something. Yeah, like just say what you mean because then you can help figure it out better, you know? And like, and honestly, I think a lot of people say I don't have enough bandwidth when they really mean I don't want to do it. Mm, Yeah, that's a true thing too. You know? Okay, so if you hate double click so much, it's kind of obvious, it's kind of gross, but like, why? So double click on an idea like, oh, I really like that. It basically means I really like that or let's talk about that more, right? I think like let's zoom in on this concept more, right? Like let's, yeah, discuss it in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we take a vote? Yeah. I just I just think it's dumb. So I'm telling <laughs> like just dumb. Just for stupidity. <laughs> uh so Julia, let's take your vote. Yeah, double click is worse. Double click. Kate. I want to hear uh, Lydia first. I think I know. <laughs> okay, fine, Lydia. <laughs> yeah, I think double click because it's just dumb. Yeah, so like for, <laughs> for stupidity purposes. Fine, fine. Are we making it unanimous, Kate? I hate them both so much. Fine, double click. You don't have to use either. How about that? All right, thank you for permission. <laughs> You're welcome. I want to empower you. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. This whole thing is about how we can empower people to, you know, use regular language. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to our final matchup of the first round, and that's thought leadership versus disrupt. I'm glad this is the last one because I feel like the three of us have very strong feelings about thought leadership because it is something we encounter on a day to day basis. Oh, indeed, we do. Given our jobs yeah. <laughs> and the fact that we work with a lot of expert contributors. Yeah, yeah. I will say. I like to use, I feel like thought leadership has come full circle from being horrible or to being like a a new thing like oh i'm gonna be a thought leader to being horrible to coming back around to like being used ironically i feel like a lot of people use thought leadership ironically and we're not talking about ironic uses well i don't know i kind of like it because you can use it ironically i guess disrupt has kind of come around too because it's mostly used ironically i don't know that people really use disrupt sincerely anymore right I think some people do, unfortunately. I think some people do. Some people who are kidding themselves that they are innovative thought leaders. Probably they're attending a hackathon at the time. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Um, yes, a lot of people, I mean, thought leadership, they're both really misused too, right? Like when they are used sincerely, they're mostly misused. If you're calling yourself a thought leader, you maybe aren't. <laughs> um, yeah. If you are saying you're disrupting something, you probably aren't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. I'm just not comfortable with the small gap between thought leader and cult leader. Yeah, <laughs> like it feels like it's just a few degrees of separation at, at, at some point. Yeah, cult of personality for sure. Yeah. No. So is this a unanimous no. thought leadership? Mm-mm. No, Mm-mm. Kate. It's not. I feel Wait. like <laughs> I just like to be controversial. No, I feel <laughs> like because I kind of do like to use thought leadership a little tongue in cheek now. Um, I feel like from 
a decade now at, at Fast Company, hearing disrupt so much is grating. So I'm going to vote that I for disrupt. Okay. All right. Vote all right. For one vote for disrupt. Lydia? Only because I am subjected to the constant stream of what people pass for thought leadership. Sincere I, thought leadership. Yeah. Said, yeah. I'm sorry, folks. Yeah. Love you all. <laughs> Please find a different moniker. But you're not a thought leader. <laughs> I will pay you to find a different name. Julia, you have the deciding vote. Yeah, I'm with Lydia on this one. <laughs> thought leadership moves on. That's the end of round one. I think we can move through these next rounds a little bit quicker since we've already kind of unpacked these terms in some depth. But let's move Ooh, on. Look to at our... how you just you just jargon as you were. You unpacked it. I actually like unpack. I think that is a <laughs> succinct way to talk about. I'm afraid to say anything now. <laughs> it would, yeah, right? It, like, how can you, it would be quite a challenge to have an entire conversation and not use jargon, but. Especially if you're talking about jargon, but yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, no, that's true. That's all right. Impossible. So let's unpack them, Josh. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let's unpack it. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much, Kate. <laughs> I want to empower you. <laughs> so our quarterfinals round: boots on the ground versus leverage. Boots on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> boots on the ground. It's that boots on the ground is a strong contender. Yeah. Fine. Agree. Kate. Fine. <laughs> I just I don't know why you I want to disagree. <laughs> See, it gets harder and harder because I like they get worse and worse in this round. Yep, they do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Boots on the ground still is a it's got a special place under my shoe. <laughs> Boots on the ground it is. Our next matchup, synergy versus blue sky. Synergy. I guess for frequency's sake, I'll agree. Oh, blue sky. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Lydia. Synergy sorry. wins. Synergy wins. Sad trombone. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Our next matchup, growth hacking versus empower. It's growth hacking. It is. Even though I made such a convincing case for empower, but yes, you did. hacking is just always going to be disgusting. So <laughs> growth hacking. <laughs> It's pretty bad. It always seems kind of seedy, like you're doing something wrong. I think just because of the connotation of hacking being like, yes. And I know hacking's entomology is more of like, oh, we're finding a clever way to do something, but not like I'm hacking into the mainframe, but it still has that connotation now. I'm going to make a prediction that the terms that are going to to take it all the way are going to be the ones that have like an ick factor. And I think double click, growth hacking, boots on the ground all have kind of ick factors. But Agreed. Yep. Wow. Let's, well, speaking of ick factor versus ick factor, we have double click versus thought leadership. Double click. Yeah. Double yeah. click moves on. Okay. Yeah. Just because it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it is really dumb. It's just dumb. I just think it's really dumb. <laughs> So we're on to the semifinals now. This is get where it's going to get tough. But I think I have a feeling of what the, the final matchup's going to be. But we have boots on the ground versus synergy. Hmm. Boots on the ground still. I guess so. <laughs> I can be persuaded either way. I mean, they're both bad. Synergy is such a classic bad synergy, business exactly. term. I feel like crowning synergy the winner, if it was, would kind of say something that way but it's because it, it's more common too should we vote for the, the grossest or the most common well wasn't this supposed to be cringeworthy it's supposed to be the worst one but also you know you anything can go into your decision making so like most used i might vote i might vote synergy i don't know hmm I personally would vote synergy. Not that my vote counts. I'm just a, a humble uh, objective. Maybe Josh should get to vote on this. <laughs> well, then it'd be an even number, and then we'd end up with a real problem. And yeah, then we could really fight about it. <laughs> All right, so both Julie and I are torn on boots on the ground versus synergy. Yeah, I mean, I think synergy is worse maybe in just in terms of frequency of use. Like, mm -hmm. people are using it all the time, and I mm -hmm. think we need to take a stand against that. Agreed. Uh, let's band together. Let's have synergy against synergy. Great. <laughs> synergy moves on to the finals. And now it, this is a real, like, bad matchup. Growth hacking versus double click. Oh, my God. Ickiest of the ick. <laughs> <laughs> again, okay, which one is used more? Growth hacking, I think. Growth hacking, yeah. Yeah. As we discussed, we've heard double click in meetings. I've never heard growth hacking in a meeting. Because well, I think we're in the I think we're in the wrong business to hear growth. We're hacking. in the wrong business. We're not hacking things. Yeah, mm, I want to say double click. I think so. We got one vote for double click, Lydia. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so fraught. I, wait, I'm going to vote for double click, okay? Yeah, well, no, no. I was going to vote for double click, too. Just, again, I'm making this case over and over. Beating the drum. <laughs> <laughs> so, so double click moves on. So now we have it's just dumb. our final matchup <laughs> to determine the cringiest worst piece of office jargon according to uh, the four of us is synergy versus double click oh oh wait this is the this is for the whole thing all for the whole kit and caboodle i think it has to be synergy just because of the frequency of use i mean like if we're comparing the two right yep yep it's so ubiquitous like it's so yes yep but this this is the distillation of the two extremes of corporate jargon, right? Like just kind of icky versus like so frequently overused and meaningless. Also, one feels very like old school business and synergy being like a Wall Street and double click feels mm-hmm. very Silicon Valley. So it's two different worlds, really. They both feel dated. They do both feel dated to me. And it's funny because when you look at some of the other terms we've talked about, there's certainly worse ones like growth hacking and boots on the ground but yeah for like frequency of of use and just like all over the place and everything i think the fact that people can say this in a meeting and everything continues as if it was a normal thing to say true <laughs> yep and that's that therein lies the problem what was the one you were going to leave the meeting if someone said julia i can't even that? remember probably a lot of these <laughs> it was double click you said it was double click it was double you said you leave yeah. the meeting on oh i wouldn't leave the meeting for synergy but i would definitely judge the person saying you would just de- you would definitely back channel slack about it absolutely that's why slack <laughs> exists <laughs> all right i guess synergy is synergy if let's take all uh, since it's our final let's take an official vote starting with lydia what's your vote synergy kate fine synergy and julia synergy and for <gasps> the have, useless vote i also vote synergy we, as have, well. synergy, we have total <laughs> synergy against synergy yay, yay. I feel like we've really done something here <laughs> our official champion of the worst office jargon is synergy uh, if you're listening to this and you disagree with us, let us know at podcast at fastcompany.com or tweet at <laughs> Personally, <Kate. laughs> at Kathleen E. Davis on Twitter and tell me why you want to empower me to use DoubleClick. Leverage DoubleClick for your growth hacking funnel. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, again, I want to disrupt this with some thought leadership and empower you to think outside the box. This is our thought leadership is that we've come up with synergy. Well, I'll tell you what, maybe this is the next gen of, of thought leadership. We've disrupted oh, God. thought leadership. <laughs> <laughs> we all need a shower after this. Ugh. <laughs> all right. This was the most important conversation we've ever had on the show. And I want to thank, and I want to thank you both for, um, your thought leadership here, and I want to empower you to not use any more jargon in your uh, communications. Uh, Lydia and Julia, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all for this episode. If you're a new listener, be sure to subscribe to The New Way We Work wherever you listen. And if you like this episode, leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And we want to hear from you. What do you think is the worst jargon of all time? Do you agree with us that synergy is the worst word? Is there a word or phrase that we missed that is especially grating to you? Email us at podcast at fastcompany.com or tweet us with the hashtag The New Way We Work. And don't forget to listen to our special four-part series, Ambition Diaries, in this feed. You can also head to fastcompany.com slash ambition hyphen diaries for photos, interviews, and audio clips from all seven mothers and daughters in the series. The New Way We Work is produced by Joshua Christensen with editing by Nicholas Torres. Mm-hmm.